Today's challenge features a medium where anything well done is rare. It's meat and potatoes. <laughs> we got this. Oh, wait. There is just one more thing. Always oh, Surprise. OK. You have to butcher your cut of meat like a real chef. And you can butcher a few different types of meats from this primal cut. How you doing? <laughs> All right. I have never butchered a prime cut in my entire life. You ready? Yeah, 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 OK, OK. The only thing I've ever butchered is a filet of fish. One hour on the clock. Your time starts now. Woo! <laughs> so okay. what are you thinking? This guy? Got that, yep. All right. Let's go. That's good for right now? Yep, let's go back. OK, so let's first talk. I'm thinking Manhattan filet with a Bordelais. Maybe a smashed potato that's like that's like fried with like fried herbs, maybe. Okay. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking with the potatoes? I was thinking maybe like a pump puree as a base for the meat and then doing like a vegetable with the sauce like around it. Or okay. Something. Maybe a texture with the broccolini being charred and then maybe for some like acid or something in there, maybe some like pickled shallots or something to go along with a it. A pickle would be amazing in there. So you're going to use what cut? I'm going to use the New York strip cut. Okay. No bone. Good. All right. Yeah. Time. <laughs> Just time. Time is the essence, and right? I choose Manhattan style filet because it's kind of a modern cut. So here's the strip. So this actually is our filet. There it is. So the this filet. Is oh, OK. So let's flip it. Yep. And that's your strip right there. OK. All right. Woo. Butchered a piece of meat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you did good, eh? oh. You're going to go Straight all across. along there. Yep. 10 minutes have already gone by, and I don't think I've really gotten much done at all over here. Yep. Really nice. I need some garlic. You need garlic. Onions. Onions. Shallot. Now that I have enough portions done, I have to make sure Jen gets going on potatoes. Yukons, yes. Yeah. So I could start working on charring out that Romanesco. Potato chips would be like a great garnish. I'm just gonna crunch up and like put on top. We need to get the Bordelais sauce going with those trimmings. The longer that sauce simmers together, the better it's gonna taste. It's a half hour on the clock. So you gotta start potatoes. I like the fingerling. They'll cook faster. Put them in a pot with some water and salt into the wood-burning oven. Is that a good? Okay. Yep. Yeah, looks good. Steaks are seasoned. All right. All right. You want herb? I'm gonna put a little butter and herb. In sure. There. Yeah. Okay. I'll, grab I'll get herb. these over there. and Start searing them all. Okay. Go over it, and you know how to baste it, right? Yes, I do. Perfect. Great. 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 It's good. good. It's charred, right? We yeah, wanted, that's we what wanted we wanted. Charred. We really need to bring out some color. Okay. So let's look at what we got. I don't want it just to be meat and potatoes. I want to make some type of a little salad on the plate. So you, you're working on potatoes now. You got to okay, smash them, right? Up. It's okay if they break up a little, because when we fry them, they're gonna go right back together. Okay. Go 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 go. go. We're doing good. Holy sh! I burned my Bordelais sauce. That's gonna mess up my entire dish. Pour that oil in there and keep it moving. I think I have enough time to get the sauce reduced so it can become a thicker consistency. Oh man, what a tiny little strainer Tiffany has. I know. I noticed that. <laughs> okay, those look good. I think they're good. Five minutes, chefs. You've got five minutes. The potato chips. I think we just. I think crumble mold. Crush it. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. Bring it together a little. Bring it in a little bit. Don't drag it. Look right there. OK. 30 seconds, everyone. Put those on. I'm going to get these right on top. And I'm going to throw them around. Right on top. Like, yeah. A lot. So we get the crunch. Beautiful, beautiful. Six, I know. five, I know. four, three, three, three two, two, one. Hands up. Hands up. Time's up. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Derek, we're going to start with you. Tell us what you made. So what I made for you guys today is a strip steak, pan seared with some charred Romanesco and some charred scallions with a pom puree. And of course, there's some texture with some potato crispies on top. Derek, how did you cook the steak? So I seared it in the cast iron, and then I threw it in the oven to finish it off. Oh, yeah. My steak is cooked great. What about y'all's? Perfect medium rare. <sighs> I love the crunchies. I love your sauce. As your first go, I think you did a pretty good job, but keep working. Thank you, Chef. Derek, did you char your vegetables on the stove top or in the oven? In the oven. I'm glad you used that. Um, how do you feel about the presentation? I think it's a bit rustic. Sometimes that's what we say when we're on the, uh -huh. on the line up there. You, went, you were going for rustic, though. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you a hint of advice. Never put anything on the plate that you don't want to eat. And the little fuzzy part of the green onion, you don't want to eat. Ryan, what did you make us? I have for you a Manhattan filet 
with crispy potatoes and herbs, a radish salad, and a pan bordelaise sauce. The steak is cooked perfectly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow, Ryan, I mean, I love the fact that you took time to make a sauce. When I think steak, there's gotta be a sauce that accompanies it. Thank you. Why did you hide the potatoes under the salad? That's the only thing, really, to me. And why did you go for this type of potato? I like to mess around with textures, and I thought it was the best way to get something a little crunchy on the plate. My favorite thing on this plate really is that potato. Creamy on the inside, super crunchy on the outside. And now we have a hard decision to make. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. It's intimidating, right? <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Wow, I mean, I have to say overall, I'm really impressed. I think the end results were both dishes that I would eat again. But when we got the plates, I actually couldn't believe how much they accomplished because they spent that first half of the challenge breaking down the meat itself. Derek and Jen got so much done. I mean, they have the potato puree, they have the charred Romanesco, they have a sauce, they have this pickled shallot, and then of course they're cooking their meat, potato chip garnish. I mean, there's a lot going on in that plate. And I really enjoyed the potato puree. A little less time butchering, they'd have had time to plate better, and that's kind of why their plates look a little, little messy. Leaving the, the end of a scallion on the plate is definitely something you don't want in a restaurant. There was something about Ryan's dish that overall I really was charmed by. His meat was cooked well, it still was that perfect medium. Ryan's dish looks like something you'd see on Top Chef and I love those smashed potatoes, the presentation was nice and clean. But his whole dish was a little bit under seasoned. I thought it could use maybe a touch more salt. I, I think they both embraced this challenge and they showed us a lot of skill. You both made really fantastic dishes. Thank you. Thank you. The winner of $5,000 and the title of Top Chef Amateur is... Ryan. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it.